Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio, so today we've got some rather ridiculous, well, secret rares that we need to be having a look at. And oh my word, I am excited. I'm so excited. I'm also becoming properly obsessed with ancient Pokemon and starting to regret initially picking Violet. But let's start off with maybe my favorite card from the Scarlet and Violet era, Special Illustration Rare Raging Bolt. This card is drawn by neither Okacheke nor Hayaganasuke, but at the end of the year, on Christmas Day, my, my Christmas Day video is always my Pokemon Awards for the year. This is the early front runner for best artwork. I love this. It is phenomenal. Now, I also need to tell you that I, I told you I'm getting fully obsessed with ancient Pokemon. This is one of the main reasons. I adore this as a deck. I absolutely adore it. For one energy, discard your hand, draw six. Bearing in mind that that's going to be, you know, turn two, single energy, basic Pokemon. That's going to be really easy to get rolling. We've then got two energy, and you discard as much energy as you like from your Pokemon, as much basic energy, and you do 70 damage for each one you discard. It's kind of ridiculous. So you've got a really good setup attack. And then you've got a really rather powerful attack to go smashing with. I love Raging Bolt. It is basic energy, remember, that you have to discard here. I love Raging Bolt. But I'm actually going to show you all three of the ancient Pokemon side by side here. Because we've got a real... Well, we've got a theme going on. They're all done by T-Zero. Now, I am extremely lucky that I went to Creatures when I went to... They're the people who make the trading card game, for those that don't know. When I went to the World Championships in August, and I met T-Zero. And that was awesome. And I didn't have a T-Zero card on me. And I, I, I don't want to talk about it, all right? I got their signature on a, on a postcard. It's not the same, all right? But it was really cool meeting them. I want to meet them again so I can get these cards signed. Oh my word, I love them. So we have a look at Walking Wake very quickly. I don't like it like I like Raging Bolt, but Walking Wake is a very interesting card. What we've got here is an ability where damage from this Pokemon's attacks is not affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. Basically, they can't block your damage. And then free energy, 120, but if your opponent's active is affected by a special condition, it goes up to 240. And obviously... There is the real built-in combo here with Brute Bonnet. Like, that's obviously where they're going here. There are other ways to do it, but they're clearly trying to make you go for Brute Bonnet here. I, I don't think they're even really hiding it. It's another ancient Pokemon. And yeah, when, when I'm getting excited about ancient Pokemon, it's not really Walking Wake. It is Raging Bolt. But this is still pretty gosh darn cool. And then, of course, we need to finish off here for these three. We've got Gouging Fire. Also, right, the ancient Pokemon have way better names than the future. It's not just iron generic word. Gouging fire, raging bolt, walking wake. Yes. Uh, gouging fire, 2 energy 60, or 3 energy 260, and it cannot use that attack again until it leaves the active spot. So you don't have to wait to turn. You need to get out the active and back into the active. But bearing in mind all the ones that say you can't use it next turn... We all build our decks to get in and out the active anyway. So I wouldn't worry about it, honestly. I think it's going to be okay. Let's just take one more look at all three of them side by side. T-Zero has crushed the assignment here. I want these cards. I really want the Raging Bolt in Japanese and it's not going to be cheap. But I want it, ladies and gentlemen. I want it. Oh, but do you like themed special illustration rares? How about the future cars? I was chatting to the lovely Joe Merrick, he of Cerebi.net this morning. Joe thinks these are better than the ancient ones. I respectfully disagree, but Joe described them as majestic. It, it's hard to disagree with that. These are amazing. And again, we got the same artist doing the trio here. They're all done by Nagamiso. And I love these. I mean, to be clear, I adore these. I just prefer the ancient. That is saying nothing against these. I think these are phenomenal. I just think the ancient ones are phenomenal. Uh, I'm taking that. That seems to work. 
Right, what do we got here? We've got Iron Boulder. This is my favorite of the three in terms of actual Pokemon. 60 damage, but if it takes damage from an attack during your opponent's next turn, you put 8 damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. Nice if you know you're going to take an attack. Uh, free energy, 200, discard 2. We need better energy acceleration to really make the most of these, I'm going to be honest with you. I still love the card, though. We then move on, and we can have a little bit of a look at Iron Crown. Now, for me, in terms of playability... Iron Crown is the best of the three. I think Iron Crown has a real chance of being good because it says that your future Pokemon's attacks other than Iron Crown EX deal 20 more to your opponent's active. And yes, it stacks. And yes, it combines with Future Boost Energy Capsule. And yeah, you, you can get up some pretty big damage here. Ancient have the better energy acceleration, but this has the damage ramping, so harder to use the attacks. But then when you do, they ramp up very, very nicely. I do think this is one of those cards that somebody is just going to absolutely break. And then we've got Iron Leaves, and Iron Leaves is fine. But again, Iron Leaves is not a card that really excites me in terms of playability. When you play it from your hand to your bench, you can switch it where you're active and move energy from your other Pokemon over. And then hit for a surprise 180. And you can't attack next turn. But like we said, that doesn't really matter most of the time. It's a basic Pokemon that can hit for a surprise 180. It's fine. But again, it's the artwork here we're really excited about. Oh yeah, but we got a couple of new illustration rares as well. And they are actually brand new, never before seen cards. Like my boy, Relicanth. The last... Pokemon that I just collected pretty much an entire binder full. I don't know why. I just really liked the card. The last time I did this was for Relicanth from Call of Legends. Something about the artwork from Relicanth Call of Legends made me collect a binder full of this card. And this is very, very cool artwork because it's got other Pokemon in there. You got some turtles and your fish and your clams. It, it's a very nice looking card. What does it actually do? Well, like normal, I've done the translation myself, but I have checked with the lovely Antoine Boulet to make sure I have not done a silly. And what we've got here very simply is, well, an attack which is garbage, 2 energy 30, nobody cares, but it's an ability each of your evolved Pokemon can use any attacks in its previous evolutions. Yes, you do need the correct energy to do so. And this is nice. I mean, we, we've seen this before, all right? We've actually seen this, honestly, a bunch of times. And generally, when it comes around, it sees play. We saw this on Shining Celebi. Like, it was literally the exact same ability on Shining Celebi. Uh, we have also seen it on Shrine of Memories, which was a stadium card. But that was obviously double-sided. So, I mean, yeah, we, we've seen it before. And honestly, it's been good. Shrine of Memories was better purely because we had better things to use it with back then. And I've been racking my brain this morning, and I've been looking at other people's opinions. Nobody has yet given me a great answer for this. Nobody has given me a, oh, this is what it's for. And there's a couple of cards on the new set that it'll work with fine. But yeah, I'm not sure we have the, the reason for this here right now, but that's not really the point. Relicanth isn't a card that has to be good right now, Relicanth is a card that will have a lot of potential at some point in the future, and it doesn't even really matter when. At some point, Relicanth will end up being really good, and that's good enough for me. It, it's just a phenomenal ability it's going to see play. Uh, the other one here, which is absolutely brand new, is a new Shiftry, and it's a stage 2, so being a stage 2, it's always going to be a bit more awkward for us to think it's amazing. Now, 2 energy, 140, put an energy from this Pokemon back to your hand, ain't doing it. And I know you can use this with double turbo because it's too colorless. So it does 120, but then the double turbo goes to your hand. So it can be attached to another Pokemon. Or it's protected from being discarded or being lost when your Pokemon gets KO'd, etc. I understand all of that, alright? I just... I don't think it's good, all right? Not for a stage two. Give me this on a basic, and I'm like, yeah, let's do this. Stage two, nah, mate. But what about the first attack? Does that change our mind at all? Will you choose three of your opponent's bench Pokemon, and your opponent shuffles their other bench Pokemon and all cards attached to them into their deck? Basically, if they've got a full bench, you get rid of two of them. 
If they've got four bench Pokemon, you get rid of one. If they've got three or fewer, you don't get rid of any. I don't think this is good enough on a stage two. And I'm not saying that there aren't turns where this won't be devastating. There are absolutely a bunch of turns where playing this will completely wreck your opponent's board. And there might be actual tears. Your opponent might literally cry. But enough to justify playing this as a stage two in a deck? Nah, mate. Not happening. Sorry about that. Let's take one more look at the future Pokemon because, oh my word, this trio looks amazing. And then as we finish the video off, we can have a look at the Ancient because I adore these and I think T-Zero has crushed this, especially the Raging Bolt. But now it's over to you guys. Do you prefer the Ancient or the Future? I want every single person watching this video right now to tell me which of those trio of artworks they prefer, the Ancient or the Future. Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. And get shoutouts on the channel like the lovely AB3, who's been a supporter of us for a while now and is a very lovely person. So shout out to them for the support and the loveliness. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.